Welcome to the SBI Podcast, offering CEOs, sales and marketing leaders ideas to make the number. Welcome SBI Podcast listeners and video podcast viewers. My name is Drew Curran, and I'm with my co-host, Andrew Urtiaga, and we're both principals at SBI, a sales and marketing consultancy dedicated to helping you make your number. This is the weekly SBI podcast, and its purpose is to share insights and information relevant to your business. But before we get started today, an interesting fact about both my co-host and myself, besides sharing the same first name, is we both hold black belts in martial arts. So I have 27 years, and my junior, 17. 17 years. So what it means to you, our audience, is if we can't agree on the topic, we'll settle it in a cage fight for the SBI TV viewers. Yeah, the real question today is, do our viewers want to see us fight or actually talk about strategic alignment? Probably a little bit of both. Okay, so we'll save a little time at the end and we'll see if we can bring out some of our weapons and, and start going at it. So let's, let's talk about today's topic. We're gonna be reviewing a recent blog post on salespredict.com entitled, Five Keys to Success in Your First 90 Days as a VP of Sales as a Startup. The reason we chose this was that we've been, a long, we've been longtime readers of the site and the title speaks to so many of our listeners. So the question for today is, do you agree that these are the keys to not blow your honeymoon period? Well, first let's outline the five keys that they highlighted. So the first one was to know your funnel. The second one was to get the right people on the bus. Third was lead by example to get your hands dirty and set the tone. Fourth was make your mistakes openly. And five was enjoy the struggle. Yeah, it sounds simple enough. So Drew, here, I'm gonna turn the tables on you. What did you think about the blog post? It's a knockout in 10 seconds. <laughs> okay, okay, tell me how you really feel about it. Hey, I'm serious. You know, I was the co-founder of a startup company. Yeah. We were both VPs of sales in large organizations. I mean, when you look at this and you start to listen to what they were saying, I just you know, can't agree with it too. But more importantly than me, take it from an expert who's been involved in leading five companies to successful sales or IPOs. Joe Vitalone, EVP and president of Mitel Networks. So Joe's responsible for the $450 million Americas region, and he leads the direct sales force and oversees Mitel's 2,500 channel partner program. He appeared on a recent TV es episode of SBI TV, and I consider him to be an expert on the topic. Let's have a quick listen. If you are hired to get results quickly by a board and a CEO, and the goal here is to make money for all the shareholders, what do you do in the first 90 days? Uh, first 90 days, I think I focus on uh, the people first, making sure I've got the team that I want. Um, second thing probably would be my sales process, making sure that we had one sales process, not five or seven or, or ten, and then that everybody on the team really understand the product mm -hmm. inside and out and can present it back to me or my CEO or to a CEO of another company. Okay. So those three things, three Ps, people, process, and, and making sure we know the product. So from listening to that, Drew, really, Joe really, his main points are people, sales process, and product knowledge. So our expert of his five main key points only got 20% of the blog right. People. Yeah. 20%. Talent. Talent. Okay. You know, think about it. My third grader knows the team with the better players wins most of the time, too. And, I mean, you gotta, you got to admit, he stole the line from Jim Collins. The guy's a champ. Get the right people on the bus. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to at least steal his line, give him credit for it. Steal shamelessly. <laughs> well done, yeah. So you, I can tell that you really liked it. <laughs> you're a little fired up about the blog. I almost don't want to review the rest of it because I, I don't know what's going to come out of your mouth. No, I told you I was passionate about this because I want our listeners to be successful, right? But when you listen to what he said, it was tactics, not strategy. You know, and I'd like your, you to walk the audience through this. But before we do that, why don't we take a short break and we'll let our viewers know about some new offerings from SBI. And after the break, we'll dig into it a little bit more. Do you have too many things to do and not enough time to do them? Is finding time to learn best practices almost impossible? The SBI podcast is your solution. Turn time spent exercising commuting, and traveling into productive learning time with a subscription to the SBI Podcast. SBI Podcast listeners get unique insight into real-world sales and marketing issues through interviews with your industry peers every week. 
Find us on iTunes by searching for Sales Benchmark Index Podcast and subscribe today. My name is Drew Curran, and I'm with my co-host, Andrew Urtiaga. And today, we're discussing a sales blog entitled Five Keys to Success in Your First 90 Days as a Sales VP of a Startup Company. But before the break, we discussed the difference between tactics and strategies. Andrew, can you walk our audience through that a little bit more? Absolutely, Drew. So let's put up the graphic of tactics versus strategy, and I'll walk our our audience and our viewers through it. And if you want to follow along, you can also download a copy of SBI's ninth annual research report at www.salesbenchmarkindex.com forward slash 2016 dash report. The section we're discussing can be found on page five of the report. So as we review this, let's define what strategy is. Strategy is doing the right things. Tactics is doing things right. So if we put this on a two by two matrix, Mm -hmm. let's start at the top, we would have strategy across the horizontal axis, right? And we would have two definitions for strategy, an ineffective strategy and an effective strategy. If we go over on the tactic side across the vertical axes, on the bottom row we'd have an inefficient way of executing tactics and an efficient way of execution around our tactics. I'm gonna start with the left-hand corner, the upper quadrant on the left-hand side. We describe that as dying fast. This is, the definition of this is having a poor plan executed brilliantly. If we go counterclockwise on the bottom left-hand corner, we would have what is dying slowly. This is a poor plan executed poorly. Mm -hmm. If we move over to the bottom right-hand quadrant, we'd have a brilliant plan executed poorly. And then where most of our audience and our listeners, I think, would agree is where they want to be is in the upper right-hand quadrant, which is thriving. This is an excellent plan executed brilliantly. Yeah. No, that's awesome. And the reason this is so important is when you think about it, you know, the average head of sales tenure is only 19 months, right? So they've got to get this right. They have to get it right. No, I, a, absolutely. And in fact, when SBI conducted a survey several years ago, we found that 72% of new sales leaders arrive at an organization and there is no sales strategy in place. Yeah. So, Drew, the obvious question here is how do you build a sales strategy? <clears throat> well, the first step would be is to go ahead and look at this year's research report. And we referenced it earlier, but if you can go to and flip it to page 156, We'll talk about the five steps to building out a sales methodology. So when you look at this too, there's five separate sections. The first one is planning, of course, right? So you're developing a sales and data plans that will allow you the organization to make their number, right? The second you're going to look at is engagement. So you're going to find the process in which the sales teams will interact with the customers and the buyers, right? Third is the organization, right? Mm -hmm. So you make sure that the organizational structure is set up correctly so we put the right people in the right roles. Makes sense. Right? So fourth is actually execution, right? It always comes down to execution. But execute the strategy by focusing on areas like the sales enablement and pipeline management, forecasting, support as well. Right? And that ties into the fifth and final step, which is support, right? So we need to help the sales team be effective in perpetuity by supporting them and making the internal organization easy to do business with. Right, I really like that five-step framework, and that makes a lot of sense. So before we continue, I think we should take a short break and let our viewers and listeners know about some new SBI offerings. When we return, I'm gonna put Drew in a headlock and make him cry. No, I'm kidding. We're (laughs) gonna discuss the sequencing of the sales strategy as it relates to the other functions. Making your number is hard. Your problems are complex. Complex problems need complex solutions. Introducing the SBI Magazine. Read in-depth stories written by award-winning journalists about how your peers have overcome their problems to make the numbers. When you need more than a tweet, social post, or blog article, turn to the SBI Magazine. Go to salesbenchmarkindex.com to subscribe. Welcome back. My name is Andrew Urtiaga, and I'm with co-host Drew Karen. Today we're discussing the sales blog entitled Five Keys to Success in Your First 90 Days as a Sales VP of a Startup. 
Are we really discussing it or are we destroying it? I think massive destruction here. <laughs> so before the break, we discussed the five steps of building a sales strategy, and, and now we will discuss how it fits across the other functional strategies. Yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the six step revenue growth methodology. So it's important here too to look at the sequence too. So it all starts with market research, right? And market research is really just getting a deep understanding of the buyers, the customers, and the users in our marketplace. So we can ensure that we have a competitive differentiation, right? Once you complete market research too, you're gonna look at the corporate strategy. Corporate strategy is really about the allocation of people, money, and time in the pursuit of profitable growth, mm -hmm. right? From there, you're gonna look immediately into the product strategy, right? Product strategy is defined as building and launching products mm -hmm. that serve a market need that are still in line with the corporate strategy. Yep. From there, you'll go right into the marketing strategy, and that's simply generating demand for the products and services we're going to sell. Mm -hmm. And sales is all about, next one's the sales strategy, and sales is all about turning that demand into revenue. Mm -hmm. Right, and then the final piece is actually the talent portion too, right? So you've gotta get the right people in the right position so they can execute on that strategy. Yeah, it's pretty clear. And I think uh, it was good that we discussed how to build a proper strategy and how it fits in terms of gaining strategic alignment. I think it's also important for our audience to understand, how do you do this? You know, what does the process look like? Um, and this really starts with what we call the annual planning exercise. It's done together with the other functions. And once we have functionally, the, the functions aligned internally, then we want to align <coughs> with the external market. Right, so sometimes I think it's putting the, the cart before the horse. People might build their strategies in silos and then try to gain strategic alignment, which is kind of putting a, a square peg in a round hole. Yeah. So from there, once you're, you're saying all that, you're gonna come up with so what, some type of system of checks and balances? Yeah, absolutely. So why don't we define what the cadence looks like? Okay. And I'm sure our listeners and our viewers are going to see that there's bits and pieces of this that they're doing today. The first is the annual review of the market research and the corporate strategy. And what you're really doing this, typically during the Q3 going into the following year, is you're validating this. You're okay. validating the research that you've done in the market. Make sure there haven't been any changes, right? And those changes might impact your corporate strategy. So there's a period of validation. The second thing you want to do is have weekly, bi-weekly alignment calls. These are one-on-one -on -one meetings between the functional leaders. The third thing you want to do is the monthly KPI review. So this is like a spotlight report, right? Red, green, yellow. And what you're doing here is you're creating... Um, uh, with the leaders, you're, you're really vetting out what the KPIs are and you're actually creating and maintaining those KPIs. Right. And then the fourth and final thing is the quarterly amendment of the functional strategies. So this is typically an offsite meeting. It's happening once a quarter and you're making allocations across people, time, and money based on any changes using an agile approach that have, cur have occurred throughout the year. Right, so what you're really talking about there too is getting it set and then the ways that we keep it set and keep it aligned as we come back into. When you're looking at that too, where would you tweak that at all, right? So you're talking about the corporate strategy. We're gonna go into that in Q3, right? You know, mm -hmm. where would you make any adjustments or tweaks if you need to, if you think you were off slightly? Correct. Would you would do that in the quarterly amendment, okay. right? So as you get together as a team, and by the way, I think the checkpoints, I'm gonna back up a little bit. I think it's happening in the weekly meetings. I think it's happening in the monthly KPI review and then in the quarterly amendments as well in the offsite meetings, right? So these having those short sprints, check-in yep. points, are critical to make sure that we have an ear and an eye to the marketplace yeah. and seeing what's working and what's not working. Right, and in those monthly meetings and the weekly meetings too, it's really the interdependencies of the other functions, right? Correct. Make sure that marketing's aligned with sales, sales is getting what they need from product all the way down, right? That's a great point, Drew, because I think a lot of times with my, what I see from my clients is that we have these meetings and they become discussions about what is, what is sales done? What is marketing done? Right. What's pro product doing? And it's an isolation of each other, but the interdependencies are very critical, making sure that those KPIs, the results, what we're, our objectives are and what we're working towards are interconnected with one another and more importantly like we said before connected to the external market yep. so why don't we do this let's take one more break okay. and when we come back we'll give the audience some great tools to make the transition successful perfect
Each day, you receive hundreds of emails, tons of text messages, countless telephone calls, and sit in too many meetings. How do you find ideas to make the number with all this noise? The SBI blog filters all this nonsense for you and presents only first-rate ideas to make the number. Simplify your life. Subscribe to one blog and read the best content. Go to salesbenchmarkindex.com and subscribe today. Welcome back, everyone. Drew, before the break, we promise our audience some great tools. Yeah. Yeah, well, absolutely. So I want our audience to have a long-term plan. The first 90 days is great, but what about after that, too? So let's have one more listen to Joe to talk about what he would do between months 4 and 12. Okay. So now let's say it's uh, month 4 through 12. Right. Okay, so you're still in your honeymoon period, but it's about to end. Yeah. Right, and it's going to take you to your one-year anniversary. So now you've got these things in flight, yeah. right? There's lots of motion happening. Yep. And the challenge now is to get everybody to adopt all this yep. stuff. So how does, how does your strategy change for, you know, from, say, months from 4 through 12 versus the first you know, 90 days? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so 4 through 12, I focus now on forecasting because um, your, your forecast tells you everything. And you have to have an early warning system uh, if the number is looking soft so that you can react in time in order to recover. Mm. I think a lot of people get in trouble because they don't forecast well in week five. Mm. They forecast great in week 10, it's too late. Mm. So you really need to know in week five where you stand and where you're gonna be. So in months four through 12, I focus a lot on the forecast discipline, uh, in our case on the salesforce.com implementation and making sure that we, that we got those right. And then the third thing is really top grading the team mm -hmm. so that when people uh, resign uh, or move to a different uh, part of organization or, um, or we uh, determine from performance that they're not capable of doing the job, um, then we top grade that talent to make sure that we're constantly bringing in really inspiring people mm -hmm. that make the team even better, where one plus one doesn't equal two, it equals three or four. Awesome. I also want to point to our audience towards a great toolkit called Promoted to VP of Sales, the, the year one toolkit, which you can download by visiting our website at salesbenchmarkindex.com. But before we go, is this blog a pretender or a contender, Drew? <laughs> Well, as my cousins in Jersey say, get out of here. <laughs> so a pretender, I take it. Very much so. Okay. So I appreciate you cleaning that up to keep our G rating. Yep. And if you want to make sure you get this right, get a copy of this year's research report called How to Make Your Number in 2016 at salesbenchmarkindex.com forward slash 2016 dash report. And if you feel you might not be in strategic alignment, you can have one of our experts lead you through a workshop, which will detail how to do this. Go to salesbenchmarkindex.com forward slash 2016 workshop and request a workshop. Yeah. Hey, Andrew, thanks a lot for going the rounds with me today. I'm sure our audience enjoyed it. Always a pleasure. <clears throat> yep. And I also want to thank you, our audience, for tuning in. This show has become very popular, and it's you, our audience, that makes this all possible. So until next time, we wish you much success as you try and make your number. Thank you, everyone. This has been the SBI Podcast. For more information on SBI services, case studies, the SBI team and how we work, or to subscribe to our other offerings, please visit us at salesbenchmarkindex.com.